We asked for it and Horizon listened because we got hands-on early access to the new EC-1500. There's been several solid improvements starting with the US Air Force gray paint scheme, bolt-on prop adapters, twin 40 amp Avian ESC, and a Spectrum 8 channel receiver, all stock. We feel confident saying that this is the best twin prop of 2023 and can't wait to see what you're going to do with yours. Check it out YouTube. We asked for it how many different times and Horizon listened to us. Or at least I'd like to think that they did. Because look what I got in my hands. It's the EC1500 version 2. This thing is freaking awesome. I am so stoked to have this in my hands. Who wants to know what's different? Well. I do. First and foremost, the servos are upgraded. So we're going to walk over here to my iX20, which finally came back. Listen to these servos. Look how fast they are. Okay, that's the first change. Upgraded servos. These are the same servos that are on Draco and the Twin Timber. So they're actually really good quality. I don't see the reason to replace them at all like I have with previous E-Flight models. On top of that, we have bolt-on prop adapters. I'm not going to take these off and show you because that's a pain in the butt, but trust me on this. These are bolted into the motors now. It's a major upgrade. Kieran's on the camera. He's an EC1500 EC aficionado as well. He loves it. And I can see him shaking his head like, yeah, that's a major change because the original prop adapters were known for kind of shooting off occasionally, or they might snap if you bolted them on too tight. That might happen with this, so don't bolt them on too tight, but they're screwed into the motor. They're not going anywhere. Another major change. 40 amp dual avian light. This thing will give you ESC info, reverse thrust, differential thrust if you want it. I've disabled it, but it's an option if you want to have it. On top of that, guess what else we have in here? The second E-Flight plane with an AR8360T receiver. Yes, that means this plane comes out of the box with the ability to set up everything that I would normally set up on this model version one, and you can do it too. And I can even give you my radio files to help you guys with the setup guide and everything. It's a little windy out here and it's just getting about blown out of my hands. So let's pop it in place. But before we do that, we're flying with a Spectrum 4000 4 cell 30C pack. And we have it shoved all the way to the very back. I'll show you where the center of gravity is real quick. And I'll go ahead and hold my hands right there. We're balancing about midway through the wing where my fingers are. So we got a pretty good center of gravity. We're gonna go ahead and put it on the ground. And then we're going to talk a little bit more. So we've got the full span ailerons. I can turn those off on a whim if I feel like it. I've got 150% rates. I'm going to show you guys my rates in Expo real quick. We're flying this model with 70% aileron rates because I fly with uh, full span ailerons most of the time. So it's really nice. With elevator, I'm flying with 50% Expo and with rudder, I'm flying with 70% Expo. So 70% Expo on the rudder and aileron, 50% on the elevator. We also have reverse thrust, which is really sweet. We're going to go ahead and back the plane up, throw switch E2, go ahead and turn it around. We have crow and full span flaps, so full span flaps coming in, and we have crow as well. All this works really well. We also have snap flaps, so the elevator uh, pulling causes the flaps to drop. And we have Harrier flaps, which cause all of the surfaces to pop up to allow the plane to stabilize in a high alpha configuration. Okay, get the call outs going. Let's get to the smart screen so you guys can see what's going on. All right, here we go. I'm so happy about this. This is a plane I have been begging Horizon to bring back for over almost a year at this point. And it's just so good to see it. Look how good this thing is, so agile. Very responsive. One of the only cargo planes, one of the only twins that I know of that can actually do rolling Harrier passes. Check this out. 16.2 volts. Freaking awesome how, how amazing this thing is. With flaps dropped, it comes in nice and slow. Look at this. If it wasn't so windy today, it would be like rock solid. Uh, unfortunately, the winds lately haven't been all that great. We're going to go ahead and turn it around, do a quick touch and go as best as I can get one. Hopefully I can get it to stabilize a bit. Kick that nose around, lose a little bit of throttle to bring her in. Look at this thing. <laughs> Lifts right up, no problem. Will it hover? Absolutely. Look at it go.
I love this thing. I have always loved the EC1500. When I first saw it, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you it was like my favorite looking plane because the original version of it looked kinda, I don't know, it was Coast Guardy, right? And I wasn't looking for a Coast Guard plane. But I like how it flies and when I when I had a chance to set it up to its full potential, it just blew my mind how good it was. It does have a functioning cargo door, which we're gonna show off as we go by here. I did forget to bring the snap pops this time around, but maybe we'll include some footage of me flying with that. The cargo door actually does function a little bit as an extra vertical stabilizer. So it does provide some useful, uh, what do you wanna call that? Um, stability on the yaw axis. I wouldn't depend on it or anything, but it's there. Let's show you guys some of the mixes can do. So we're gonna go up, enable snap flaps. Snap flaps. Look at the way it flips over itself. This thing is not very heavy, uh, surprisingly. So it does fly pretty good. I've called it heavy in previous videos, but it doesn't really feel all that heavy now that I've flown to the models. Look at how well it stabilizes into a Harrier with the elevator flaps, Harrier flaps mixed in. Look at this. That is just insanely good. And this is a cargo plane, guys. Now I've tried doing this with things like the, the E-Flight Beechcraft D18, and I've tried doing it with the Twin Timber. The Twin Timber can actually do it pretty good. Uh, but the EC-1500 is still the king or queen, depending on which gender you prefer for your aircraft, of doing Harriers. It also does some of the best flat spins I think I've ever seen in a, you know, a twin. Check this out. This is not differential thrust. This is just counter aileron. And now we're letting the plane spin on its own. Woo! I had to walk over here to get away from those trees. Otherwise, I would surely have crashed it there does insane we got a plane coming in flat spins okay i have a uh got a cirrus coming in so i gotta go ahead and land it real quick we'll go ahead and catch up in just a sec gonna land the plane real fast turn around get into the pattern we do fly at a full scale airport so we were just gonna go ahead and take a quick break right here drop full flaps bring her in real quick i see the cirrus over there let's get out of his way all right rest reverse Perfect. All right, cutting right here, and then we'll be right back. That is a rule that everybody who is flying at an active airport should follow, which is uh, FAA mandated, by the way. If you're uh, if you're in an active airport or if you see full-scale aircraft, you need to give way to full-scale manned aviation. Anyway, back to the point. Uh, let's show you guys what the roll rate looks like with out. So this is just the small ailerons. It's a little uh, puny, right? Turn it back on. Massive difference. This is why I use 70% expo on the ailerons. It makes a big difference in how the plane handles. Uh, overall, man, this thing is, it's pretty good. I have always loved the EC-1500, so I'm super happy to see Horizon had finally listened to me and they're like, yes, we're bringing it back. Doing the Harrier flap mixing right now, bringing it in. Look at how stable this thing is. If not for the wind, it would be absolutely rock solid. Look at this. Just insanely good, man. They do, this is marketed as a 3D plane, so it can do all sorts of cool stuff. And you can set up crow, full span flaps, just about anything you wanna do. I wanna bring in another Harrier Pass because this still is one of the most fun things ever. I even spray painted the floats. I went to Lowe's and I found the right color spray paint that's almost perfect for the, for the type of plane this is and the type of paint that it's got. Hold still, Kieran, I got you, buddy. Look at this. Plenty of power to come in and out of it at will almost. Go up and do another flat spin because, hey, why not? I'm not done yet. Look at the power to weight. It's just so strong. There's a guy in my Discord server, Ron's45, who tries to make everything as powerful as he can make it. And I have a feeling he's gonna love this plane if he hasn't already figured out which one it is by this point. Um, this is just so good. Let's do a quick touch and go. I know my last landing wasn't perfect, but you know, that's okay. Yeah, I need to actually pull the flaps up a little bit. They are so effective that I have to add a decent amount of throttle to bring it in safely. So we're gonna actually land with half flaps. I think full flaps might be a little too crazy. 
Okay, we're gonna push the nose down, let it come in. There we go. Much more controllable. Doesn't slow down anywhere near as fast with uh, half flaps, so I think maybe full flaps is probably a little too extreme for this plane. That's okay though. I've been finding myself reducing my flap settings more and more as time goes on. It's just been too extreme. Um, it's one of the number one reasons why I've been bouncing my planes is that I've been flying them with like incredibly aggressive flap settings. Flaps should be there to aid with lift, not to be like drag inducing devices, you know? Got a little bit of a tailwind, but I think we'll be okay. A little bit of throttle hold on approach. Look at that. Just kiss on the ground with it. Landing this plane doesn't require much, but you do need to consider keeping some throttle on the approach. It makes a big difference for how it comes in. Uh, for me personally, it definitely helps out a lot. Right now, I'm not using any, adding a little bit in now. Golly, I love this plane. Open the door, close the door, bring it back around. Let's do another rolling Harrier pass right in front of the camera. Rolling Harrier circle on an EC1500. Insane, man. Can you believe it's doing that, Kieran? Barely. It kind of does a knife edge spin too. All right, we're running out of power. I'm gonna go ahead and bring her around. I did disable LVC, which is low voltage cutoff. Uh, I don't see much of a point to using low voltage cutoff. So I'd rather burn the battery packs than burn my plane. Just makes more sense to me. The plane's more expensive. And also I have to keep it in good shape for Horizon because they're expecting me to make a good video with this. Insanely good, man. This thing is so freaking awesome. Let's uh, let's bring it over to the camera and taxi it back. I'm loving it, dude. It's so good. Like, how can you not love this thing? It's not the most 3D crazy plane in the world, but it's not really trying to be. It's trying to be a. But then, now it's trying to be a scale C27J Spartan, and it just looks incredible. Do I care that the sur like the the control surfaces aren't scale? Absolutely not. I don't even care in the slightest. What I care about is how good it flies, how good it controls. We got seven minutes and 41 seconds. We probably could have gone to 10 minutes if I hadn't been trying to fly it as goofy as I was. Next time we fly this, we're gonna take it to the lake. I'm gonna put floats on it and we're gonna hover it over the water. You know we are, because it's so capable of doing that. Um, just absolutely love this thing. We'll give you guys a final score on it coming up, but I can already tell you, it's gonna be up there. See you guys at the lake in just a second. All right, we're back. Second day of filming with the EC1500 from E-Flight, sitting out here in the water. Got the floats on it. I even sprayed it with some paint that I found from Lowe's. I took one of the ailerons in because mine was a test unit from Horizon to make sure that it would survive you guys flying it and me flying it. And I was able to spray paint my old set of EC-1500 floats to match the color, or very closely match the color of the model. We actually had to leave the other lake I was gonna fly at because the winds were so excessive that this plane would have tipped over inside of the, the high choppy uh, what do you call it? The, the waves that were forming from the water and all the winds. It's a little challenging to fly in, but you guys are going to see, as you can see out there in the distance, those trees are really getting battered by this wind, but the plane has handled it pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and just pop in full flaps here and take right off. Half flaps, that is. This is being flown with a Spectrum 4030 C pack. No issues to center of gravity at all. Shoved as far back as it can go. Put it into a rolling Harrier. You guys, you think uh, EC-1500s can't do cool stuff? And maybe you think it can't do it on floats? You are completely wrong. This thing is an aerobatic beast. This is, if you ever ask me, it will be the answer that I give you that this is my favorite prop plane. Look at this, snap flaps. Quick into a spin with the rudder. It's so powerful. It's so cool looking with that new Air Force scheme on it. And it handles a lot of this turbulence no problem at all. I'm actually shocked at how well it's handling. Go invert it. Look at that. It's doing slightly nose up on its own. So it is balanced neutrally with a 4,000 pack shoved as far back as it can sit. 
Uh, let's go ahead and put it into a long, super long flat spin. So we're gonna go ahead and build up some energy, go up high. As much as I can get through this turbulence up there, the plane does not want to climb as much as I want it to. Okay, here we go. About right there. We're gonna, not even using differential thrust. Once the spin begins, we use counter aileron input and it just starts spinning faster on its own. There we go. That, that, that tip over in the sky, that, that excessive roll you saw was caught or caused by turbulence. It is very windy out here. The AS3X gyro is working overtime to make this thing a reality right now, that it doesn't turn into a messy little mess. We're gonna line up and see if I can get it to land. I'm gonna try to land with no, uh, no flaps or very little flaps. I'm trying to watch out for wind shear. It's very easy to get caught by it. There we go. You guys know me for uh, buttery landings better than that one, but in this wind, man, I'm gonna take whatever I can get. Uh, and just to show you, we're gonna use Harrier flaps or, or snap flaps to get it up and start doing some Harriers with it. So we're gonna lift off in just a second. Gotta scratch my eye, there we go. Let's use this wind to our advantage. Wind is really kicking up right now. Look at that, handles it like a champ. Okay, we're gonna lift out of that. Again, trying to make sure that we don't lose the plane. Rolling Harriers are no problem at all. Even rolling Harrier circles. Woo, get out of that. Go up and do a quick hammerhead. Which it actually does do. The original EC1500 didn't do that anywhere near as well. This thing is actually not bad at all to fly on a windy day. It's just not as precise as I want it to be. Like when you saw the hovering and whatnot that you might have seen me doing at the airport, it was a little bit easier to hover in those conditions. And Harriers were a little easier too. Let's do a quick touch and go if we can get it. Not a bad landing, I'd say, for uh, the conditions we're dealing with. Those trees are out there just getting like moved sideways almost by this. Snap flap flip. Look at that, it doesn't even stall out either. So we're gonna put it into an elevator and use both uh, control surfaces, like the ailerons and the flaps pointing up with stick input and some throttle to get it to go into a stabilized, or as stable as we're gonna get it, Harrier. Gonna get it nice and close to the camera. Rudder work is necessary. It's got so much throttle that it has not too much of a problem with this. Uh, the wind is really making it challenging. Whoa, just about stalled it into that water. That would have not been good. Again, I'm, I'm wrecking my stuff so you guys don't have to. I want you to see what these things can do, even on uh, days where the wind isn't the best thing in the world, right? Quick pop top style turnaround. We're running out of power, it feels like. Let's turn up the volume a little bit. Yeah, we can probably get some speed. Let's go speed up. Yeah, I, I can't get it to behave with me in this wind, man. There's some things model aircraft do well in wind and there's some things that they don't. And this one can do most of what I want it to do pretty well, but in this wind, man, it's super challenging. Let's try a flap landing now that the wind's starting to pick up a little bit more. Getting battered by turbulence out here. Okay, turn it into the wind. Okay, I don't like this at all, but you know, actually I don't like it at all. We're just gonna get out of it. Screw that, man. Why, why try to do something you're not feeling confident in, right? It's important to be able to bring this plane in. I still got to shoot B-roll with it on the water. Good gosh. We're just going to do it without flaps. Let it windmill into the wind. Good Lord. I'm going to jank up the stabilizer even more. We're going to go around. As much as I want to land it and get it down right now, I also want to do it safely without destroying the plane and without having to go out and swim back to get it or use the timber to push it back to shore, which would be hell right now with this wind. All right, get it down lower, there we go. Throttle up, keep that roll stabilizer going good. There we go. How much power we got? 15 volts left. So we're about storage voltage right now. 
Uh, those of you guys who wonder why don't I use the battery telemetry or uh, like the, the battery checker, because I've got voltage telemetry and you can see it on screen now, so you don't really need to know what I've landed with. You can see it on screen. It's always visible for you. With the water rudder, it's very easy to steer in the wind. No problems at all. We're going to bring it back to shore. I'm going to give you guys my viewpoints and thoughts on it, and then uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more and give you the review on it. And let's go ahead and oof, get her out of the water here. This thing, I'm going to start with the review score as I hold it as best I can in this wind. This is a solid... I'm going to tell you guys, I begged Horizon to bring this back. So how can I give it anything but a 10 out of 10? Make sure there's no bikers coming down this path. This is a 10 out of 10 for me. It's got amazing servos. It's got it's something I even forgot to mention earlier, which is an upgrade where the FPV hatch was, this is now a hole, which allows airflow to flow through those uh, vents in the tail so that you can keep the batteries from getting overheated while you're doing all sorts of maneuvers and stuff. Uh, in the earlier version, it didn't have that. We've got reverse thrust now, which I used a little bit on the water. We've got differential thrust if you want to use that, which can help with water and can help with flat spins. But honestly, you don't really need differential thrust to flat spin this thing. It'll do amazing flat spins on its own. Just by having full span ailerons and some rudder input and some elevator, it'll just happily do them all day long. The snoot comes off. You can install a GoPro inside of it if you want. You can even uh, cut out this foam in the back of this bulkhead here, which goes to the battery compartment. And you can put in a GoPro, what do you call those things? A little mount. That way you can could, you could mount a GoPro 10, like what I'm using to record with. And my wife knitted this handy little windsock looking thing here. So it keeps the high winds from being as noticeable. You'll hear them in the camera, but not as much because of this. Um, overall, I mean, the float system does cost, like I think it's like an extra 10 or 20 bucks and then for the hardware, and then you gotta get the uh, the floats themselves. I'll show you guys the, the spray can that I used from Lowe's.com. I just went to the local Lowe's here in, in Cary and picked it up. Uh, I just, I literally, cause the, the ailerons and all the control surfaces are detachable, like you can just pull them right off. I just took the wing in with me to fix this little dent in the wing that Horizon made when they were testing it and just put on my own uh, color match paint. I'll give you guys the color match paint code too so you know which uh, tub you need to, or what color you need to, when you go to Lowe's, if you go to Lowe's. I mean, if you go to Home Depot, I suppose you can just bring a piece in there. Uh, overall, man, like the cargo door is pretty cool too. We're gonna do more with this plane in the future. Uh, we're not doing anything with the cargo door, cargo door today, at least not on water. Um, but it does work really well. Upgraded servos throughout, upgraded ESC, voltage telemetry out of the box, differential thrust. What's not to love? This thing is a total upgrade to what was one of already the best models I have ever flown personally. So yeah, again, 10 out of 10 for me, and I think you can see why. Thanks for watching, guys, and check out the B-roll section coming right up for some more thoughts, and hopefully this thing doesn't fly away in my hands. <laughs> As you've already seen, takeoffs and landings aren't really difficult at all. Do watch out that you keep the plane as level as possible before touchdown and while taking off. It's not hard to scrape a wing with a narrow wheelbase, but it's otherwise very uneventful and honestly, pretty easy. 3D performance is why we love this bird and why we love Horizon for bringing it back. 45 degree Harriers are totally free of wing rocking with the Harrier mix we use. If you're more adventurous, you can bring it up to an 80 degree Harrier and just float around effortlessly with only a light touch on the elevator and some rudder work needed. We didn't forget about inverted Harrier either. Peg the elevator down and use a little bit of throttle and it'll settle right in. Use rudder to steer and aileron to counter any wing drop and it's happy, completely happy, to float around upside down. It does really nice rolling Harriers too. The new Spectrum A332 servos are very responsive and have enough torque to pull it through no problem. Differential thrust is not needed to flat spin. It might get into a spin faster with differential, but it's the only model we've flown so far that spins faster with no thrust than with thrust. It's insanely good. And you don't need differential to change directions mid-spin. Just push down and change stick directions. It'll do the rest. Hovering is so much fun. It's very stable and easy to control without differential thrust and transitions back into level flight easily. In some ways it hovers better over water because the floats increase pitch authority and the prop wash over the water never gets old. Something that didn't change from the first version is that the props do bite into the water, so be sure to add some elevator pressure to make the EC1500 get on step as you throttle up, otherwise the props will eat a ton of water before it picks up any speed. 
It looks awesome in slow-mo and has no effect on the servos at all, so don't be afraid of this. We're going to highly recommend getting the floats. The plane is even crazier with floats and opens up your ability to fly almost anywhere. Even tiny ponds work well if you're confident performing a Harrier landing. If you want to draw a crowd, this plane gets all the attention. High winds are no problem for the EC-1500 either. It handles them fine even if it does get bounced around a little bit. The AS-3X system does a fantastic job keeping it relatively stable in shifting air masses. So now that you've seen what the EC-1500 can do, let's move on to the quick setup guide. As always, feel free to ask questions in the comments and we'll answer as best we can. Here's a quick comparison between the two versions. The original EC-1500 had ESCs in the engine nacelles and an AR-636B receiver. The new EC-1500 has a twin 40 amp Avian ESC and an AR-8360T receiver. You can see the old collet style prop adapters versus the new bolt-on prop adapters on display here. The first step in setting up the EC-1500 for maximum performance is ensuring that the wing type is set to two ailerons and two flaps. The tail type will stay default. The channel assignments are shown on screen. Don't worry if you don't have a name for the cargo door. The IX series radios allow you to rename channels. Make sure that your receiver port assignments match what's on the screen here. We use switch A to control the cargo door, which is channel 8 on our setup. We've programmed the ESCs using the Spectrum Avian Programmer box to use channel 9 for thrust reverse and assigned that to switch E2. Channel 10 controls AS3X are safe. Here's the servo reverse and travel setup. All flight control servos are set to 150% travel. The cargo door is a little different and is set to 110% up and negative 150% down. This allows the door to tuck in flush to the back end of the plane and removes any slack. Mix 1 is for full span ailerons. This is a pretty simple setup. Just make sure that you copy these settings and assign the aileron servos to the correct ports, otherwise you'll have to reverse the travel percentage. Mix 2 sets up full span flaps in Crow. Full span flaps are best used for takeoff as they generate a massive amount of additional lift. Crow is best used for slowing the model down and allowing it to maintain a higher angle of attack without stalling. The raised ailerons create an aerodynamic washout effect to the wingtip which allows for a higher angle of attack at a lower airspeed without stalling. This setup is really useful on turbulent, windy days. Mix 4 is activated using the same switch as Mix 2. You'll want some down elevator added when Crow is deployed as the upward ailerons create an upward pitch moment that must be countered with downward elevator, otherwise the plane will nose up quickly and stall. Mix 3 is for snap flaps and harrier flaps. Snap flaps create a strong pitch moment allowing the model to perform tight loops. Harrier flaps help reduce the wing cord and get the wing out of the way during harriers, along with creating additional upward pitch moment that stabilizes the model during a harrier. This is a two-part mix. You'll also have to use mix 7 to create the effect as shown here. A simple mix of elevator to left aileron will produce the effect. Make sure it's on the same switch. You can see the stock gyro settings here, and you can customize them to your preferences through the forward programming menu. Thanks for watching, and be sure to let us know what you think in the comments. See you next time with a new upload.